it going. I'm hopping on with a prophetic word, no tag. So if you see this, it's for you. Sometimes I tag people, sometimes I don't. And I do not feel led to tag anyone today. So if you do see it, more than likely it is for you. Um, so I'm just hopping on because I have been posting a few statuses this week on what the Lord has been saying. Um, and usually I have a prophetic word at least like once a week where I come on and I bring the prophetic word to his people just to give insight into what's happening in the season. And I am excited. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you feel it. I don't know how many people know. Hey, Kendra, how's it going? I'm just giving the prophetic word on what I saw yesterday. Was it yesterday? What I saw yesterday and where the Lord led me today. So it is... It is a, a lot going on right now. So I am hopping on. Hey, Alyssa, I put in the post I, I was just talking about right now where if you see it, it's for you. If you see this, then it is more than likely for you. I know Kendra, we were talking this morning, so I know it's for you. Alyssa, we have been chatting. So again, I'm excited. So I'm going to go ahead and get started as people come in. My name is Johanna. I am the founder of Journey to the Kingdom, where I teach women how to experience a breakthrough in their life heal from their past, and transform their life into the life that God is calling them to live. Hey, Jarita, how's it going? You did catch me. You always watch my lives afterwards. So I'm glad that you are on right now. So I'm just going to let you guys know what has been happening in the spirit, what the Lord has been talking about, what is he has been saying. And this week, I've been posting like statuses on where we are right now. And a few days ago, I posted a status of, hey, Jasmine, how's it going? The status said, God is getting ready to like walk you into the promised land or into your promised land or something like that. So I actually made that post a few days ago, maybe three, four days ago. And so I'm in prayer the other day and I'm really asking the Lord where we are in the season, what's happening. Hey, Mika. See, I'm telling you guys, the people who show up on live, even without me tagging, are the people that it's for. So if you are here, if you watch this, even in my YouTube People, I'm going to put this on YouTube. If you guys are here and you see it, it's for you. So, um, this one has bit a lot of pieces into it. So, bear with me, but I'm going to get it started. So, what I was doing yesterday, he talked to me about the promised land. And so, I'm in prayer and I'm like, Lord, where are we going? Where are we in the season? Where are you taking your people? What's going on? Um, And I was just like, Lord, show me what's happening. So in this vision, I am like in the woods. I'm in like the forest and it's like I'm coming out of the forest. I'm coming out of this land. I'm coming out of this wilderness. But then I can see the promised land. I can see a palace. And I know a lot of you guys, you can see what's coming. You can see where God is about to take you. You can see it. Let me know in the comments some fire emojis if you guys know what I'm talking about. Where you know where God is taking you. You can see it. He's speaking it to you. He's telling you. But it's like when I was there, it was a piece of glass that blocked me. I couldn't get to it. It was something that was right in front of me, blocking me from getting to that promised land, to get into that palace. And so I like put my hand up and I'm like, Lord, what is this? Like, I can't get to where I'm trying to go. This confirmation already before you even say, because I asked God what's up. Okay, big eyes. I can see it, girl. See? So it's like I'm in there. I came out of this wilderness. I'm like in the woods pulling all of this stuff away so that I can get to this next place that he's trying to take me where I can see it. But this wall or this glass is stopping me. So as I'm in this vision and I'm praying in spirit, I'm praying and I see like the enemy come up and he like zaps me and zaps all the energy out of me. So I'm on the ground. And this is what's happening with a lot of us where we've been doing this for a while. We're getting tired. The enemy is coming, trying to stop us, trying to delay us, trying to get us off track. All of it. So I see myself down. And so I had to pray and speak life into myself. I had to tell myself that I'm more than a conqueror. I had to tell myself that I would be able to make it. I had to tell myself that I would move past this point. I had to tell myself that God created me for this. I had to tell myself that I would be able to break through this barrier. And a lot of us, hey, John Vonda, a lot of us are at this point where we have to speak life into ourselves. We are allowing the enemy to step in and to stop us from breaking through that glass. And I'm telling you, I was at that point where I could see this glass. I was right there. I, I mean, it was a, it was pretty far. Like the palace and in in where I was going, it was still a bit more work, but I could see it. And so the enemy zapped the energy out of me. So I'm in prayer, speaking it over myself. I can do what I make and I'm doing it. And so God told me, do you believe that I can do it? I say, yes. 
Do you believe in yourself is the question he told me to ask us today on this live. It's that all of us can say, oh, you know what? I believe God can change my life. I believe God can transform my life. I believe God can make me into this, that, and that. But he told me to ask today, do you believe in yourself? Where God is telling you, I need you to believe. And he has been having me speak to a lot of people on expectation, expecting it. And so God has really been using me to say, like my faith, like, I have to be able to believe and expect what he is trying to do. And so that's what he's telling us right now, like prophetically. Do you expect it? Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that he can do it? Do you believe that in yourself to be able to do whatever it is he's calling you to do? So I'm speaking life into myself. I get up, the, the, the glass disappears. The glass disappears. So as I'm speaking life into myself, I'm telling myself that I can do it. As I'm speaking into myself, I break through. I have a breakthrough. So I get to going down this trail and I fall. I'm stumbling down. I'm rolling down this hill. I'm going through all of this. I'm getting beat up, basically. The hits, the warfare, everything that we go through. that Everything that we go through. I'm getting hit with all of this stuff as I'm trying. I'm just rolling down this hill, y'all. Like, I'm just rolling down the hill. I get to a point where it was like I had to take a leap of faith. I had to take a leap of faith. I had to say, you know what? God told me I need to do this. God told me this is my next place. You guys may feel like you have to take a leap of faith in order to get to that next level. I hit that point where I had to take a leap of faith and I had to step out. But it was like I was pushed into that leap. And where I thought I wasn't going to make it, where I thought, and I'm going to use some examples, where I thought I wouldn't be able to pay my bills, where I thought I wouldn't be able to make it. Like an angel swooped in and picked me up and carried me to where I was trying to go to this, this palace, this, this promised land. So I get there. And there's like these huge gates and I start walking and God is telling me there's still a little bit more work to do until I get there. So I'm walking in, I'm walking through these gates, I'm going to where I'm going. And, and what he's saying in this hour is that there is work to be done. It is not just going to come to us. It is not just going to happen overnight where we hear these words, we see these prophetic words, we see people talking about it. And it's just like, we expect it to just come overnight. Every person that you see with this transformed life, with this amazing thing that God is using them for the most part, there was work behind it. There was consistency behind it. There was downtimes, uptimes, all of that was behind the scenes and most people don't see it. But he's saying in this hour that it is not just where you hear the prophetic word about overflow. You hear it, but you just sit there and you don't do anything about it. He's saying that that falling down the hill, that taking the leap of faith and the angels coming and carrying you to that next place. He's saying that that's the work that goes behind the scenes that we don't see. And he's saying for whoever it is that is just expecting it to come without the consistency, expecting it to come without the work that is not coming. <laughs> like you have to go out and do what he's calling you to do. You have to go out and finish the work that he's told you. If he told you to launch that business, all of this, all, everything else. I've given these examples over all my prophetic words. But we're at a point right now where we don't have time to play. We have to finish it because we expect these things to happen. It's like that one time you said we can see the promised land, but it's going to take us to swim to that side. We got to do some work. Exactly. And I don't even remember saying that, Kimberly, but this vision was saying that we are, we have to do it. And it's like, like even when I passed it, he did a, a word about open overflow, like overflow this Sunday, stepping into the overflow and, and just, and I'm going to go to the word. Like, I feel like God's telling me to go here, even in numbers 13, exploring Canaan. Where they said Moses sent them into Canaan to explore the land. And then they came back and they said, we went into the land to which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. They came back with the fruit. They came back with the grape. And they're like, oh. And God has sent me there. I'm, I'm coming back <laughs> from exploring Canaan. Where he has just, where I have been doing the work. And I can come back and say, I have been consistent. I've been doing the work. I've been sacrificing so much. And I'm going, he sent me into Canaan to say, wait a minute. I'm coming back to tell you guys what happened in Canaan and what's happening over there. So I'm stressing the importance of it because it's like he led me to this scripture today where it was just like, um, see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. Um, all of this, if you go to Numbers 13, I'm not going to sit here and read all of it. But at the end of the day, it's that where God is showing me right now what he can do in our lives, what he will do in our lives. Like for me, the fact that he is paying off student loans, like. I just go check my student loans and I see a payoff on there that I did not pay. I didn't pay that. 
But he's coming in because he's saying, I need you debt free because I want you to help other people in the kingdom with their businesses. So I need you not to have debt so that you can go out and pour out. And that's what a lot of us are kingdom financers, where God is going to allow money to flow through us to help finance the kingdom. He's going to use you in whatever capacity. But we also have to do that work. We have to build that house. We have to build it up. We have to do whatever it is that he needs us to do so that we can go back and tell other people this is what he's doing. And it is a witness to believers and unbelievers. Like imagine an unbeliever. I'm going to use Kimberly, how Kimberly just said. Imagine you are being consistent on TikTok. You're being consistent on Instagram. You're being consistent on Facebook. And God just booms into your business. And your t-shirt line just takes off. And, and God is just using you in a mighty way. Imagine an unbeliever who sees that you started with a t-shirt line and God just takes off. It's like, wait a minute. I want to know your God. Who is your God? And that's what's happening with a lot of us. People are watching. You may not even know people are watching you. You may not even know that people are just watching your journey. But as you are sharing what God is doing, as you are sharing, you, Alyssa, you, I use your story anonymously, but I use your journey a lot to help people see what God can do in your in people's lives. Like I, your journey is just something that people can relate to. And so I use your story a lot when I'm speaking with people. And so for me, an unbeliever who sees that, who just comes across your page and who just comes across what God is doing in our lives as believers, they want to know our God. And so that's what it's about. It's not about this is what God is doing. It's about saving souls and bringing people into the kingdom. So if God wants to use us, if he wants to use us to bless us in a way that unbelievers see it and they say, who is your God? That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yes. Amen. Love you, Hannah, my friend. I love you all, sister. Oh, Marissa, I just sent you. I just messaged you the other day. I'm glad you're on. I've never seen you live. So again, exploring Canaan, that's what happens. And so I'm going to have to go back to my journal. Um, because I keep forgetting what happened once I got to the promised land. Um, so I started and it was a bit more work. So after this, after I fell and took that leap and the angel carried me to the promised land, I still had work to do. And so I'm going to give you guys an example. I'm at a point right now where I am doing like the official, official launch of my online course. It is so much work. It is the most work I have ever done in my life. It is all, it is pushing me to the limit of things that I don't like to do. I don't like small tasks. I don't like doing PowerPoints. I don't like these th the things that I need to do. And the enemy tries to distract me. He tries to make me get up and not want to do it. He, hey, Olivia, how's it going? The enemy tries to stop me from doing what God needs me to do. Because that is the thing that will get me that extra work to get me to the promised land, to get me to the palace. And as I'm walking, I hear from the pit to the prison to the palace. And I know everybody who's on here can relate from going from the pit from where you were just low, where you were just down, where God had you from here, where people saw you and they were just like, this is who this person is and this is who that person will be. I was at the pit. I was at a pit at one point. From the pit to the prison, maybe even the prison in our minds. We put ourselves in a prison in our mind where the enemy is coming with the attacks on our mind and we feel like we're never going to break out of it. Depression, anxiety, the prison in our mind. To the palace where God is trying to take us. So that's where I'm talking about, from the pit to the prison to the palace. And that's what I was hearing as I was walking to this prep promised land, as I was walking to this palace, I'm hearing from the pit to the prison to the palace. And so God is saying that at this point right now, you are at a point where he is trying to take you there. But again, it's work to do. Finish the work. Like, I don't want to do this work. <laughs> I, I have this, The work that I need to do is not my favorite kind of work. I'm a big thinker. I'm a visionary. I can see big parts of it. But in order for me to get to where God wants to take me, I have to do it. I have to finish it. I can't not remain consistent in what he's telling me to do. And so a lot of us get to a point where something's not working the way it should. But we know God told us to do it, but we just give up on it. We're not going to get to becoming that full version of what God wants to do in our life, that transformation, that promise, like him using us in the capacity that we're supposed to be used. Like we're not going to get to that until we finish the work, until we go from the pit to the prison to the palace. Like all of that has to happen, but we get to a point where we give up, where we're not consistent, where we don't keep going, where we don't keep pushing, where when the enemy zaps that energy out of us, like in the beginning of the vision, we give up. And then we hear these pastors preaching about all of this happening in our life and God is going to bless you. But okay, did you do what God told you to do to be blessed? So we get to that point right there where God is telling us to finish it. Do what I'm telling you. You be obedient because that's the biggest thing is obedience. So as I'm going, I reach the palace and I get there and I always forget this part as I'm reading. I just wrote this the other day. Um, and they opened the door and they welcomed me and they put a crown on my head. 
I get to the door. I finally finished the work. I finished what God told me to do. I don't want to do this. I'm launching my online course, but I don't really like doing administrative tasks. It takes too much time, but you know what? I'm going to finish it. I don't really like doing PowerPoints, but you know what? I'm going to finish it because that part is a, is a part of obedience, is a part of the assignment. I need to finish the assignment that he's given me. I get there. I get to the door. They put a crown on my head. This is the crown for you guys, the crown of finishing whatever it is, the crown of getting to that transformation in your life, the crown of reaching the promised land, whatever that promised land looks like for you. Imagine that crown, getting the crown of finishing your book, whatever. Put a crown on my head and they turn me around and tell me to look at where I came from. So everything that you're going, what God is saying right now is everything that you are going through right now, you're going to look back when you get to the palace, when you get to the promised land and they're going to turn, you're going to turn and say it was for a reason. All of me falling down, going down this road, the enemy draining me, trying to stop me. I look back at it and I realize where it was for a reason. Like I went through that for a reason. And so at the end of it, I'm trying to see what happened. I thought about the pit. Yeah. So he took me back to following through all of that and knowing it. And so from all of that, you know, I say that God is telling me at this point, like, I'm going to show you that land. I can confirm you guys that. God is doing it. He is really showing up from him blessing me financially after leaving my job to him. At the point when I left my job, the time, the month that I left my job, my student loans for my master's, I have a master's degree in public health and health administration. My master's degree, like uh, student loan bills were due that month. I had to trust him. I had to take that leap of faith and trust that he would provide. And he provided by paying it and paying $1,200 towards it. So that I didn't, that was one less thing I had to worry about to pay off my car. So it was one less thing I had to worry about. All of that started to happen as I trusted him, as I was obedient in what he was telling me to do. As I began to reach that palace, that, that, that promise, like I'm taking those steps to get there. And so he made me make that bold declaration to say that I was minding my business. I'm like walking through my house. I hear him tell me to get my checks. I don't even have checks. I had some checks from when I went to the bank. They like, do you want checks? Sure. I don't even write them. I heard him tell me to get my check. I heard him tell me to write it. I heard him tell me, I have a girl group where we talk and chat, to post it in there. I heard him tell me to take this and declare it and put it on my page to say that this is what he's about to do in my life, where I took the check and said that in the next 90 days, he would provide $100,000. So he told me to come on this live and say that who, whatever it is you expect him to see in your life, that you like, you have to believe it, you have to expect it. So if you are someone who is believing that as you complete whatever it is he's telling you to do, that he will perform and he will do it. He told me to use hashtag documented miracles. And then when you use that, it will be a stream of people who have documented miracles from God where we declare it. We say this is what he's going to do in our life. I know I just talked to Kendra earlier today where God told her he would pay off for her house. And I confirmed it through just me posting something else where he confirmed it for her. So all of that to say that God is doing it. But we just need to finish it. We need to be able to push past it because at the end of the day, it doesn't just come. I mean, it's some work behind it. I had to work to get to the palace. I had to work to get to that promised land. I had to take those steps to get there. And so I'm going to go back up. I pray that this has blessed you guys because at the end of the day, it is near. It is close. If you are on here, more than likely this is for you. But God is saying that you are about to step into it. You are about to step into your promised land. You are about to see him move in your life. But everyone on here that I see just at the top, every person I on here, God is, is really having you do something. Like I see a few people on here. I can't see everyone. But there is something that God has you doing right now. But it's up to you. Like the ball, I hear the ball is in your court. Whatever that means to you. I hear the ball is in your court. Oh, hey, Rain. And I have seen God put his fire in you, Rain. Like, just how you have grown in these last few months. He is pleased. I love it, Rain. So keep going, especially for you. I know the enemy tries to come for you, but just know God is very pleased. I, I heard it the other day. Yes, it has. I feel it. So I pray that this has blessed you guys. Uh, just know that I've seen Canaan. I explored it. God is showing me bits and pieces of it right now. And if you do not believe, one, in yourself, two, that God will do it, and three, that it is possible, like it's that expectation, it's expecting it, it's writing it, writing the vision, writing what he's saying, write it, write it down, because then you can go back and God is getting the glory to say that 
I told that person I would do that. I have to write down that God said he would pay off my car. And then I can put that documented miracle up that God did it. I have to say God told me that as I write this check, he's going to do it. That's a documented miracle. And that is for believers and unbelievers to see what God is doing in your life. You don't want to just keep it in your head and not document it. Write the vision so that you can go back and believers and unbelievers will see what God is doing in your life. And that will help save souls for the kingdom. I know the work I need to do to get it to the, the, the palace. Praise God. Yes. Yeah, so, whew, that was a lot, but I'm glad I got that out. I could breathe a little bit because he was telling me to do it. Um, but yeah, let's get it done, you guys. I'm putting dates on them. Exactly. You see, Kendra, I had dates on it. So it may take, and again, it won't be instant. Like Kendra and I were talking this morning. I think the date on God paying off my house was like November 2019. But I can see that 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 journey of him coming in with my student loans, the journey of him coming in and helping me out. Like, and it's not about money. It's about freedom. It's about, and I talk about freedom a lot. It is about freedom to do his work because if I was were bogged down about money and my finances and my bills and all of it, I wouldn't be able to freely do his work. I wouldn't be able to hop on and talk here. I wouldn't be able to go into my group. I wouldn't be able to go on Clubhouse. It's the freedom that we need to be able to spread his word. Think about Jesus. Jesus traveled all over the place. He wasn't bogged down with bills and needing to pay his bills. He had freedom. <laughs> we need freedom. And that is what it's about. So I don't want it to be all about money, but I want it to be about freedom. And as we are stepping into that promised land, it's giving us the freedom to go out and do what God has called us to do. If God wants me to hop on and do a prophetic word, I don't have to worry about being at work and not being able to come on right now and do a prophetic word because God has already taken me into where he needs me to be. So I'd really want you guys to focus on that part. It's just the freedom aspect of it. It's the freedom of being able to serve him and, and just being able to do what it is that he's calling us to do. And not to say not everyone is supposed to be an entrepreneur and not work. I get that part. Some people are called to work and everything, but there's still a freedom there that is just amazing. Freedom is the key. I will only be focused on God, not these bills. And exactly. And so that's also going into, do you trust him, Jarita? Like if we don't trust him to provide and, you know, and that may be something that he wants to teach us. Like God wants to teach. I had to learn to trust him. I had to learn to depend on him. I had to learn to lean on him when he, I was the only um, income in my household and I wasn't making the money that I needed to be able to. I had to say, Lord, I trust you. And I had to believe and expect that God would promote me. And he did promote me. He promoted me in my position at my job within like two months. So that was my expectation. That was me expecting it. That was me speaking and saying, you know what? God is about to give me a promotion. God is about to promote me. Hey, you know what? I know you probably don't see it, but God is about to promote me in the next few months. Like I am that crazy person that just has that faith. Crazy enough to write this because God told me and I believe and expect God to do it. That once I align my faith up with him, once I'm putting the work behind what he's telling me to do, I believe it. I just expect it. And that's the biggest part. Crazy faith. Exactly. Like I have ridiculous faith. Like my faith and God is just next level. But I've lived to the point and I've leaned on him enough to know that I can trust him, that I can depend on him. In my wilderness season, where the only person I had was God to depend on, I trust him. And I believe that if it's something that he's telling me, if he's telling me that he's going to do this, if he's telling me he's going to do whatever it is that he's saying and speaking, like I don't just tell myself that he's going to pay off my house. This is God speaking a desire into me so that I can speak out and speak forth so that he can deliver on it. Like, this is not me just saying it. This is what he wants to do in my life. Again, freedom. If I don't have a mortgage, I have freedom. I can I can travel. I can go out and speak, do conferences, help heal women. Freedom. I had to trust him when he told me to quit my job before I got the one I had now. And I moved 800 miles away from my family. Exactly. That Now that, so if you could trust him to provide, and I know you have a really good job right now, Kendra. Like, keep that trust going because he it's a muscle. Like that faith is a muscle. And if you don't use that muscle, it's not getting stronger. Like me, I use my faith muscles a lot. Like this is a faith muscle. I have faith. So I'm using that. I'm bodybuilding with my faith so that God comes in and, I'm, and it builds my faith up stronger. Put in first nine two. So again, I just want to hop on and let you guys know that. Um, one thing I just found out is that my calendar is booked until May. So I know a lot of people schedule prophetic consultations. I am booked until May. Um, so I think the only thing that I have right now is mentorship. So again, I always, um, want people to reach out, but again, I don't know what's going on in my calendar. I think 
God is working on some stuff. But just promoting mentorship. If you ladies want to join and learn the roadmap to get into that transformed life, what God wants to do in your life, the keys, the steps to really basically making it to the promised land. Um, it's me walking you through it for three months. We meet twice a month. We're going through healing. We're going through just the process. I do I have the link? Don't have the link, I don't think. But I'll post it in the comments afterwards if anyone is interested. But I don't know if you ladies have any more questions. Do I have it? I've been busy. I've been live all day. Again, I've just been moving around everywhere. But you guys can go to www.journeytothekingdom.net. Click mentorship if that's something that you're interested in. We're doing that. I know a lot of people have been asking about the consultations, but I don't know what to do about my calendar. It's booked out. Um, but mentorship is another option. www.journeytothekingdom.net. And I am about to go on Clubhouse. So if you guys don't have me on Clubhouse, I do a room there as well. Again, freedom, you guys. And I don't want it to be about money, but I want you guys to really focus on freedom. The freedom that it will allow you once you make it into that promised land to do the work that he's called you to do, to change the lives that he's called you to change, to be available for the people who need you. So that's pretty much all that I have. I'm excited today because that vision just really really gave me like a fire to say I know the enemy wants to stop me I know he wants me to say I can't finish this work I don't want to do this these tasks but it just allowed me to say you know what I know that he is trying to stop me and I love a good fight with the enemy so for you guys put on your armor and finish the work all right I'll talk to you guys later